Biosecurity is the most effective and the cheapest way to protect your chickens, but unfortunately, most poultry farmers don't practice it. Not because they don't want to, but because they just can't get it. I mean, it's too vague, ambiguous, and they just drop it and do what they know. Well, that is exactly why I'm here to break it down and make it as easy as a slice of bread. I want to ensure that you understand it and practice it because you can't afford to not understand what biosecurity is. So let's dive into what we have to discuss today, which is biosecurity. So biosecurity is a set of practices that you put into place to prevent the introduction of disease pathogens or the spread of diseases on your farm. But from that definition alone, a lot of people get things wrong. They tend to focus on just one part of biosecurity. And that is exactly why I'm trying to break it down in this video to ensure that you get every part of it because you don't want to get it wrong from the beginning. So now I'm going to be dividing biosecurity into three different parts that will help you to know where you start from. I understand that the knowledge of biosecurity can be like all over the place, but I'm going to give you a list, a list that you can follow before the end of the video. If you don't even get anything at all from this video, you can look at that list and it's like a checklist that you can follow and you get things working for you on your farm. I'm going to split biosecurity into three aspects. And the number one is going to be conceptual biosecurity yes conceptual biosecurity and the second part will be structural biosecurity structural biosecurity and the last one is operational biosecurity which is what most of us are familiar with or at least maybe not the term but that is what people have in mind when they hear the word biosecurity or when someone is even trying to tell you about biosecurity that is what comes to mind operational biosecurity the type that also permits you to use medications and cover for your sins so if you are yet to start your poultry farm wow you are privileged to be seeing something like this at this point in time you are privileged to be seeing something like this so talking about conceptual biosecurity this talks about the whole concept of your poultry farm from the point you are thinking of okay i need to buy a land for my poultry farm from that point that is where conceptual biosecurity comes to play so biosecurity is not something you start to think of when you have your beds on the farm it's not just about the food deep it's not just about you washing your hands you that's not it that's more of operational biosecurity but when you talk about conceptual biosecurity the whole idea the whole ideology of having a poultry farm there are some rules that should guide you for example where exactly are you going to site your poultry farm it is not advisable for you to site your poultry farm where you have other poultry farmers around you lots and lots and lots of them it is not so good because it is easy for wind to transfer diseases from one farm to another so you can see if you site your poultry farm mr hay sites his poultry farm here and mr b decides to site his own poultry farm few meters away and diseases come from mr hay's farm to mr b's farm Mr. B will have to pay the price. You have to start treating your beds, whereas you would not have had to do that if you were not so close to this guy. This guy, okay, probably had done some things. He didn't handle his vaccination properly. Maybe something went wrong, but you are not going to be paying for that on your farm, which is not supposed to be. So conceptual biosecurity has all this, puts all this in your mind, even the closeness of your of your poultry farm your proposed poultry farm to the road to commercial roads and all that the matter because you don't want some noise the noise of vehicles moving up and down to disturb your your chickens especially when you are into layer farming layers don't like noise they don't like stress they don't like distractions they don't like anything to agitate them so you have to try as much as possible to site your farm in a quiet place that is still part of the concept the whole ideology of okay i want to have a poultry farm you need to start planning all this it is part of biosecurity you also want to try as much as possible to site your farm in a safe place 
where there is low history of theft, pilfering, and all that, it is part of the concept. So let's move on to the second part, which is structural biosecurity. Hmm, maybe a few persons consider this, but not many. So structural biosecurity, that also talks about things like fencing your farm. You have more peace when you fence your farm, you prevent the invasion of people that you don't necessarily want. Like I've been on some farms as a consultant, I've been on some farms where I spend weeks and then uh, you see people walking from nearby farm, maybe crop farm, they walk through your poultry pen and they are, they are trying to look at the birds. All those things are not good. You don't know how many poultry farms they have had to walk by and you don't know what disease they might have carried and they are just transferring it to your own farm. <clears throat> so you want to be very, very proactive about all these things. Fencing your farm is one good thing to do. Another thing is the water system. Yes, you want to ensure that you, you place the water system in the perfect location. Like I think in the last video, I talked about placing your, your water tank for broilers, especially in a very cool area, preferably even within the pen, if you can't provide a suitable covering for the tank outside. So that is another area you need to look at when you're talking about structural biosecurity. And you also want to consider the issue of the road, the road on your farm. If your farm is fairly big now, you will certainly have road for vehicles. So you want to make sure that that road is all weather road. That is, whether it is raining, whether it is dry, the place is good. Vehicles can come in and go out easily without them having to, uh, to sink and all that. So that is another area you want to look into. And then a lot of people complain about rodents, rats, and all that that bring diseases. Rats, like I said in one of my videos, rats are carriers of about 45 diseases. I think I mentioned it in that video. So you want to have your structure in a way that it prevents rats from entering the pen. You cover it well, you net it appropriately. So that is still part of structural biosecurity. Everything that has to do with structures from the outside fence to the building of the pen, you know you want to construct the, the changing room, all those things that has to do with st construction, structures that will help prevent the transfer of diseases, yes. And finally, is operational biosecurity that we are all familiar with operational biosecurity. But then, with operational biosecurity, it is very essential that you train your staff, you train your employee, because you can't be the only one having all this knowledge in your head. You won't be around on the farm all the time. It is important that you train them through some routine practices it's more like it's more like a routine a guide okay this is what you do in the morning this is what you do when you come in the morning this is what you do at 8 this is what you do at 9 30 at 11 at this and that and these are the things you should never do so those are the things that that is why most people talk about operational biosecurity because this is the kind of knowledge you want to pass to your employees and it is very important as well it is very important so the issue of the foot deep that should always be good you know you, know, you have to clean it every morning put fresh disinfectants to ensure that it is still strong to combat pathogens and you have to change your clothing the outer clothing you have to change it once you are entering the pen you have to put your leg, leg inside the foot deep a lot of operational uh, things that you need to do a lot of things that you need to do you know the feed bags you don't bring feed bags from another farm to your farm you know the disposal of dead animals like in structural biosecurity for example you have to take care of the place where you'll be incinerating dead animals you have to provide an incinerator far from the chicken house so you don't allow the fumes from the burning to go into the pen so all these things ah <laughs> that's why poultry farming is not it's not that cheap it's not that cheap you want to do it well and if you can invest well and you have the right knowledge you actually get the best result but if you don't do it well if you try to cut cost in the beginning while planning all these things then that money you are trying to save you will spend it on treating diseases in fact you may lose all your investment and what's the point going into poultry when you are going into it to lose no we don't do that so i want you to try and 
master these three parts of uh, these three aspects of biosecurity the conceptual biosecurity the structural biosecurity and the operational biosecurity all three have to be merged together before you can tell me that you are practicing biosecurity in your farm don't just tell me that you have food deep no that won't work don't just tell me that you change your clothes and all that no you have to start from the basics you start from the beginning and then you'll be able to put out diseases on your farm at least you'll be able to minimize the treatment of diseases to about by 70 percent be able to reduce it by 70 percent i can assure you if you avoid birds coming into your farm um rodents coming in you yourself you don't go to other farms and bring your body just as is and you land in your farm no so all those things will help save your investments